Good evening, everybody. I'm Karen Woodrow, owner of Visiting Angels Senior Home Care right here in Chelmsford, and welcome to Chelmsford Tonight. In his 1979 hit song, British singer-songwriter Nick Lowe claims, you've got to be cruel to be kind. But this past January, Chelmsford's elementary school students proved it's actually cool to be kind. With us tonight are the two assistant principals who brought the Great Kindness Challenge to their schools. Please welcome Betsy Dolan from Byam Elementary and Jason Romalo from South Row Elementary. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, let's start with Betsy. Betsy, sure. when did you start the Great Kindness Challenge at your school and what motivated you to do this? Yeah, thank you for having us and thanks for asking that. We started uh, four years ago. Um, we wanted to have something that really was throughout our whole entire school building that spread kindness and that culture that we want to create in our, our building and our community. And so we started, we found this organization that does this Great Kindness Challenge um, throughout the world, actually. Yeah, it reaches, about 20, it reaches about 20 million students. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. great that your elementary school is part of that big network of kindness. Fun, yeah, yeah. And Jason, you are a little newer to the game. What made you think about this and bring it into your school? Yeah, no, um, so I've been at South Row for the last six years. And similar to Mrs. Dolan, um, you know, South Row is a community where we embrace kindness. We like to say, like, um, we, we teach with the mind, but we also teach the heart, uh, which is a really important message. So we've been doing the Great Kindness Challenge actually the past over six years um, since I've been there. And we every year we try to put a different spin on it, um, try to highlight um, different aspects of being kind, right? It doesn't have to be something of monetary value to do something to be kind, but it could be just a simple hello, um, you know, being kind to a friend, um, a sibling, someone at home. Um, so we've really tried to spice it up a little bit as the years have gone on. And it's something the, the community really really uh, latches on to, um, and it's just a special buzz in the building. So let's talk about the details of the Great Kindness Challenge. How exactly does it work in the school? What do you, what do, you do for your students, or what do they have to do? Sure, so it um, starts with a, a checklist for the students first through fourth grade, having 50 things that we ask them to look at, and some can do all 50, it's voluntary, um, some do, and some do as much as they can, kind acts, whether it's at home or in school or in their community. Um, but also doing kind things in their classroom. Teachers think of things that they can do as a grade level or as a classroom also. So it sort of starts there with the checklist, but then grows um, throughout different, different types of ideas and creative kindness um, events. So Jason, in, in your school, you really sort of track the list of the things that the kids are doing. How do you do that? Yeah, so we typically, our classroom teachers and our school community, uh, tries to keep track of all the different aspects of being kind. And at the end of the week, we do a culminating jam board uh, where we have each student think about what did they do kind during the week. And we're able to actually see on this virtual jam board all the different kind acts that the students did. And we can tally it up that way to see how many kind acts were done over the course of the week. So it's really fun um, to kind of come together as a classroom community, but then also project it uh, for the whole school to see. Um, so you can kind of see the sea of kindness uh, that got spread uh, throughout the week. And it probably motivates the kids to see things that they didn't think of that they want to keep in the back of their mind for next yeah, year's it challenge. Yeah, it does. Even now in March, the board's still up. So mm -hmm. as kids walk by, they like to see, that was, my, that was mm -hmm. what I did. And it does uh, it remind them about our message of being kind in our building. And I don't want to leave our kindergartners out. They take part as well. They just yeah. do a smaller list to make it more. <laughs> Attainable. Well, I think just, just being <laughs> yeah. like adorable yeah, <laughs> and yeah, making yeah. people's day with their it's, smiles it's, is something that they do all the time. Yeah. So kindness is um, sort of a prevalent me message in the Biome school. You have a, a Lego lion. We do, yes. Yeah. So we had a presenter come, uh, Mr. Rob Surrett, and every child had a part in putting one piece and staff members yeah. putting one piece and one Lego as part of that picture. And so it's in our lobby, a be kind message. Our mascot is Louis the Lion, so that's why the lion. Um, and so it's something that all of our students and staff and community members who visit and our parents see when they come into our building. And something else that I noticed about your school is these sort of your affirmation bulletin boards where you have sort of messages to the kids that, that they are good and they can be kind and that they do these things. And I, I, you've got it in your school and um, Jason you have it in your school yeah. and, um, and I think we also have a picture of that tally board that's yeah. up in South Row Elementary School showing all the 
kind acts. Yeah, we're going to keep it up throughout the whole year, I think. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a great, like I had said, um, culminating piece to highlight all the things that were kind, but also be reminded um, as you're walking into the building, it's kind of that message to do something kind for someone, even outside of Kindness Challenge Week, right? That's the kind of goal uh, that I think we have in our building. All right, so we all think this Great Kindness Challenge is really fantastic, but let's take a minute and listen to what the kids have to say about it. Yeah, that's the best part. One thing I really liked about the Great Kindness Checklist was drawing a picture for a peer. It really gave me a chance to show off my drawing skills to other people. Say thank you to your bus or drop-off driver because it, rem it reminded me to thank my dad. To read a book to your younger child because I like books. Compliment five people because it will make them happy. This book inspired me to draw pictures for Bayan because it really can brighten somebody's day. I put kindness notes around my house for my family and why it's important to be kind is so everyone feels loved and welcomed. I gave a kindness note to my friend. What I liked about the Great Kindness Challenge is the challengers because it makes people kinder every single day. I think it's important to be kind because you can make someone's a day. It doesn't have to be just helping someone out. It can be as simple as saying, hi, good job, or how are you? This is all the great things that we have done at self for the Great Kindness Challenge. That was so nice. Really and sweet. I, yeah. And I think as it repeats every year, these it'll just become a natural thing for these students, which I think the world will really appreciate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So you've given the students lists. Why don't um, each of you tell me what your favorite act or acts of kindness are on that list? I will. I love the stories they bring into school, seeing how it, that it transferred to home, and that they were did a kind act for a sibling or for their dog. Um, and then they come in and discuss it and share it with their classmates. That's great to just hear the stories when it's spreading, not just inside our building, but they share it out in their community. Yeah, no, I would agree with Mrs. Dolan. It's nice to hear things that are happening outside of the building. Um, I do love to hear um, some of the kind acts that the kids do for members of our staff as well, um, from our paraprofessional staff to our recess aid teams, just the small things that they try to do to make a difference uh, through our, our through our school community through staff, um, I think that it really creates that buzz again of being kind and having the kids have the opportunity to do things for their teachers and staff that they love. So I love hearing the students uh, share about things that they do for their teachers um, that support them every day. That's really sweet. So I hope that you will go back to Byam and you will go back to South Row and you will tell your students that you guys also committed an act of kindness by coming on Chelmsford tonight and sharing your story with us. They love that and they love seeing us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. We'll be right back after this break. My passion for cooking started when I was a child. My earliest memories were cooking kulurakia, Greek sesame cookies, with my mother and my grandmother. Over the years, I've cooked for co-workers, friends, and family, and I even started a little business called Aphrodite's Confection when I was in my 20s. As I ease into retirement, I'm introducing Cucina Cuisina, a cooking show which is a tribute to my Greek and Italian heritage. We'll be making baklava, spanakopita, Pasticcio, which is known as a Greek lasagna, a vegetable Italian lasagna. I'll even be tweaking a few of my yaya's recipes with more healthier ingredients. Some of my recipes are in the Holy Trinity Ladies Philoptifos Greek Cookbook. I think you're going to really like Cucina Cuisina, so let's get cooking. Awesome, that was really great. Oh, really good. That was the promo spot for Chelmsford Telemedia's new show, Cucina Cuisina. With me tonight is the show's host, Deborah DeTora. Thanks for joining me, Deborah. Well, thank you for having me. So how does it feel to be in a studio without your kitchen behind you and all your pots and pans and ingredients? It's a little different, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, so you can just sit back and relax and we'll have a nice pre-dinner conversation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you are a newcomer to Chemsford Telemedia's lineup. You are a producer of your own show, and you, uh, from what I understand, you are a great addition. Thank you for, for presenting this show to us. How did the show get started? Well, I'm going to be easing into retirement, so I wanted to 
do something, you know, because I'm not the type of person that can just sit still. So um, I've always wanted to have a cooking show. At, always since I was little. I mean, I used even when I was little, I used to watch Julia Child, The Galloping Gourmet. So I used to love that. I used to, whenever my grandma, actually I was probably a little bit of a pest with my grandmother, <laughs> my mother, <laughs> trying to help, you know, at least, okay, here's some dough and just roll it. You know, I was, I, I was just fascinated with it. And I love to cook. I, I just, I've always loved to cook. So, I, right, I, so you're living the dream. You are hosting a cooking show. And here I am living my dream, hosting my own talk show. Yeah. But so how do people like us bring these shows to a real TV station and get to be on air? Well, I, I watch Chumps of TV and the, um, t the Telemedia show. And they, they had different shows, usually the planning board or the committees. or And they had some other little... Um, shows that were very informative and I said you know they really do a good job they, they have a very big repertoire I thought, well maybe they'll be interested in a cooking show so I called there was just a cold call Pete answered the phone I told him my little dream and he says well why do you want to wait till you retire why don't we do that now and I was just kind of surprised. I said, really? So that's how it started. It was because of Pete. That's great. So you were a Chelmsford Telemedia viewer. I'm really happy to hear that you guys do <laughs> exist. <laughs> um, and so really, anybody out there can come to Pete Padula here at Chelmsford Telemedia with an idea for a show and end up doing something for the town. I mean, I think your cooking show really um, it's got a great spirit to it. You learn a lot. You present in such a wonderful way where oh, you... Thank you. You can just feel your love for the food on the show. So I hope everybody tunes in for oh, Cucina okay. Cuisina. Um, so let's see a little clip of how the production of your show actually goes. Okay. So we're going to cook that up. On camera four, go back to your master shot, position one. A little bit. Just until they're wilted. You don't have to wait for the carrots to cook because it's going to cook in the broth. Tilt down a little on that shot or up. And then to that, right. you want to add I know it's tricky. some salt. Go ahead. Up, 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 up. To taste. Um, Keep going. That's you good. can use about well. a teaspoon. But if you want a little bit more, you can use a little bit more. So that was Pete Padula, the director of Chelmsford Telemedia, and Bob Parasau. Bob is also a volunteer for Chelmsford Telemedia, so really, viewers, you can come get involved with us. All right, Deborah, back to the cooking show. Where did the name come from? It's so interesting. Well, I'm of both Greek and Italian heritage, so cucina is a, t a kitchen in Italian, a cuisina is kitchen in Greek. So I just put that together and came up with that title. Yeah, it's got a good <laughs> ring to it. And what kind of recipes are you cooking? Or what, what's, your what's been your favorite episode so far of, the, of all the things that you've cooked? The one that's the longest, it's the pasticcio. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time. But um, it, what I'm trying to do also is infusing the two because a lot of the Mediterranean recipes are the same. And, and I just, uh, like this last one with the lentil soup, the recipe is actually the same for both the Greek and the Italian, only the Italian has, the Italian version has a, an extra ingredient, which is the spinach. So even with the, the curumbiedas, which are the Greek wedding cookies, I prepared two versions, the Greek version, which is the powdered sugar, and then the Italian version, they just use icing. Same recipe. The dough is the, the the recipe for the dough is actually the same. It's just that the decoration is a little bit different. So a lot of your recipes delve back into both of your heritages. Yeah. The, the sort of the same base, and then you delve off with different yeah. different finishes. So it's you know it's basically the same. I mean both Greek and and, and uh, Greece and Italy are close to one another, same thing with the, 
all of the Mediterranean, and actually you'll see Syrian and Lebanese cooking. They'll be basically the same. There's different ingredients, and of course, in the different regions, even in Italy, from the north to the south, they have, um, and it depends on what was, what at that time was available to them. So some, for instance, this in, in Greece as well, north and southern region, different, different uh, herbs and spices grow in different in those different regions, and for in, for example, the spinacopita, which is the spinach pie, most everybody is used to the spinach pie, but in Greece, they have um, it in the northern part. They will gather other types of greens, a mountain green. So they'll make the spinach pie with not spinach pie, but they'll be, it'll be a mountain green pie. So it's it's nice to hear you talk about how both of your uh, of your recipes have both your cultures in it because Pete was complaining yes, that, uh, yes. That, <laughs> that you were leaning a little bit towards the Greek and he wants to see some more Italian recipes. <laughs> yes, he was complaining about that. <laughs> so, so we're going to fix that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a little balance. And who, who taught you how to cook? I just, I, just by watching my my grandparents, my grandparents from both sides, from your both Italian sides. grandparents and my, your Greek grandparents. Well, not my Italian, because my my dad was actually an orphan, but his sister was a great cook. Unfortunately, she passed away, and all her recipe. My cousin didn't find any of the recipes, or oh. they got mixed up with something, and he did. Because I'm right now, I'm I'm in the process of writing a family cookbook. And I want everybody's recipes from the family so we can leave something behind. Because now, you know, my yeah. grandmother did not write, read or write Greek or English, so everything was from memory. Right. And my mother had these little pieces of paper all over the place stuck in different cookbooks. So, you know, that's how things get lost. Yeah. So if we have a, a family cookbook, where, you know, the kids and the grandchildren and everybody can have something, a little bit of us when That's we really leave nice. this earth. And you'll be adding a lot of a lot of you and a lot of cucina cuisina um, yeah. to your to your ancestors, which is really nice. And they'll have the the TV show to watch it. They'll they actually know. learn the little techniques in perpetuity, right? Yeah. And once something's online, it's there forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're one of the good things that we're going to have there oh, forever. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Deborah. Have fun with your show. and oh, look forward to the it. next episode. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Here with an update on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee are committee members Carly Rehm and Jen Melanson from the town of Chelmsford. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, Thank you. thanks for having us. Well, it's so nice to have you, and you guys have been really busy since the last time we talked about the DEI committee. Um, Carly, want to give us a little history of what went on this past year? Yeah, so far this year, we've had a number of events um, that focus on key moments. Um, one of them was our Black History Month. Uh, that took place in February. Uh, throughout the month of February, we had a number of events uh, celebrating the rich history of black Americans. And one of them, in fact, was our um, jazz brunch, uh, where we had a live jazz band. It was a catered brunch. Uh, we had artisans there. And our community was able to get together, enjoy the music, and enjoy each other, and learn a little bit more about black history. That sounds like a great way to present such a rich, full subject of black history. Um, we have a clip from that moment so we can all enjoy the sights and sounds of that day. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the second annual Jazz Brunch. But when he said, I, you know, I look over the mountaintop, he's kind of telling us, this is just what I've seen. I'm not the only one with vision, the only one with eyes, the only one with passion. It's 
So another event that I know the DEI committee sponsored was Marian Ryan coming to speak about her with her anti-hate task force. Why don't you tell a little bit about that event? Yeah, that was a, um, an important event that we had um, where the DA came to inform the public about um, the rise in incidents of hate crimes across the state as well as across the country and what her office is doing to combat hate crimes. So um, we learned a little bit about um, their diversion program where that they employ with youth who are involved in hate crimes um, so that youth aren't just punished, but that they're actually um, involved in a sort of repair process um, with individuals that are involved in the hate crimes so that they are able to learn from them and um, take away something from that experience. So that was really impactful uh, presentation by the DA for us. That sounds like a great program. I know that my son's high school has a lot of um, anti-Semitic and you know, racist remarks. They find them in the bathroom. And it's just so hard to believe that these young kids actually have this hate. And it's about teaching them about right. the impact of their words. Let's listen to Mary and Ryan, a clip from um, when she was with us that day. I mean, unfortunately, the number of these cases is going up pretty dramatically. In 2023, we had a 50% increase in the number of actual cases we were able to charge. Big part of my job as DA is making sure that everybody across our county isn't thinking, do I belong here? We want to be sure that people feel like they belong here, they are safe here, and that certainly no one is being targeted because of who they are. So I think what she said here that's really powerful is that she wants to make sure that everyone feels like they belong, that they don't question their belonging. And I, you know, I think that the DEI committee is really taking care of that for the town of Chelmsford. Yeah, it's a, it's a prominent, um, even just part of the name of the committee, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're always, you know, trying to um, develop programming that helps community members feel as if they're included. Yeah, and there are so many events. I saw your your list of, you know, we have Black History Month in February, and May and June are just full of different um, different sort of ethnic groups of, mm -hmm. of celebration of their culture. Carly, you want to tell us a little about some of the upcoming events? Yeah, sure. So we have a number of events coming up in May and June. May is uh, the Asian, um, I'm sorry, I'm losing my, my space here, the Asia Pacific Islander American Heritage Month. Um, it is also in June, I'm sorry, in May, we also have the Caribbean American History Month. Uh, and in June, we have Juneteenth, which is another event. Um, that we've held for a couple of years now. Um, and the last event, last year's event was canceled due to rain, but the year prior we had hundreds of people who attended and the event just gets bigger and bigger every single year. Yeah, and we have a clip from the one that oh, actually happened before the rain. Excellent. Let's, let's roll that so we can see how much fun the day was. <laughs> have those little kids lined up to do the electric slide again. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be, ha we'll have line dancing again this oh, year. Oh, good. And you have vendors, there are going to be booths. Tell us a little bit about what to expect. Um, so yes, we'll have um, traditional uh, southern cuisine being served. We'll have a number of food trucks that will be there. Um, as in past events, we'll have uh, dancers, uh, musical performers. Um, there'll probably be, um, we'll have a keynote speaker. And um, we'll have informational um, texts and things like that around Juneteenth to share with people so that they understand that Juneteenth is not a black celebration. Um, it is a part of American history. And so we really want to get that message out there so that, again, once again, it's embracing the whole community. It's for everyone in the community to enjoy. Because it really was a great day for this country when 
Juneteenth happened, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that we're all celebrating it yes. now. It's yeah. very nice. Um, and so there's there's even more people that we're going to be celebrating. Um, we've got yeah. Pride Day coming up. Yes. So um, we're kind of building off of the um, kind of unexpectedly wildly popular first annual drag show that we <laughs> held last year, which was a sold out performance at the Center for the Arts with nearly 200 people in attendance. We had to turn people away at the door. Um, in incidentally, the tickets that sold out first were the senior priced tickets. All right, and go seniors. Had, exactly, <laughs> so, um, so this year we will be celebrating um, the month of Pride on June 1st. We're kicking it off right away at the beginning of June and we're doing it bigger and better this year. So we're starting off the day with a drag brunch, a family-friendly drag brunch. It'll be a character brunch, so I don't want to infringe on copyright laws and mention the type of characters, but okay. it will be a character drag brunch. Um, food will be provided, um, and then there will be a cash bar and mocktails that are uh, themed after the different characters at the brunch. Um, and there will be performances, live performances. This will take place from uh, 9 a.m. to noon on June 1st. Um, tickets will be going on sale at the box office for the CCA very, very soon. And then once that's finished, in conjunction with the Chelmsford Market on the Common, which is our farmers, weekly farmer's market, we're doing again this year Pride at the Market, but again, bigger and better than we did last year. So in addition to our regular market vendors, and also resource tables from Rainbow Chelmsford and the Chelmsford Health Department. Um, we're also going to be featuring um, members of the LGBTQ community who own small businesses that are uh, artisans and makers, and we'll also be highlighting um, community resources for members of the LGBTQ plus community. And then we'll cap it all off with our repeat of our adults only drag show um, at the CCA that evening. It will be from six to 10, doors will open at six, the show will start at seven. Uh, it will be again emceed this year by me and also our uh, captain from the fire department, Danielle Kachufus. And um, it's gonna be a, a great, great night. Last year we had performances by three queens and a drag king. This year, we have uh, six performers at each event. Wow. So we will have, um, I think in total, we have three drag kings and we have five queens that are performing between the two shows. So it's going to be a great night. Sounds like a great day. I want to thank you guys and the rest of the DEI committee for all you're doing. You are certainly spicing up the month of June for everybody here in Chelmsford. Thanks for being with me. Thank you. Very thank much. you. So before I sign off, I just have to announce that Jen Melanson, this is your third time on our show, Chelmsford Tonight, and I want to thank you for the three, Pete. And I also want to thank my two Pete's, Pete Padula and Peter Dews, for all they do in getting this show out to you so you can find all the amazing things going on in Chelmsford. Thank you and good night.